my angels welcome back to my youtube channel and welcome back to a new vlog well today is quite possibly one of the most beautiful days i think we've had all year it is absolutely stunning wall-to-wall -wall sunshine and i think it might have been our first frost of this autumn winter and i couldn't be happier it is just spectacular Oh, Dora the Explorer went up there this morning and genuinely gave me shivers with the beauty that was up there. It was absolutely spectacular. Went for a little bit of a mooch with the dogs. I have been having a bit of an editing day, to be honest with you. I've just had a quick shower, popped an outfit on because I've got a very exciting day tomorrow, but I need to prep today uh, because tomorrow morning I have got a few bits and pieces on and I just want to be prepared so tomorrow I've got my nearest and dearest girlfriends coming over for a pumpkin and petals party. We have abolished the boys. Well, we might have a delicious little baby boy coming, but as long as they're babies or dogs, I do not mind them being boys. So I am hosting my darling girlfriends tomorrow night here at home. And I want it to be really girly, super wholesome, maybe a couple of activities, of course, some scrumptious food but there is a theme as I said pumpkins and petals so lots of pumpkins and lots of florals and I don't know whether we're going to do like floral arranging in the pumpkins or if we're going to paint petals onto the pumpkins anyway you get the gist there's going to be lots of florals and lots of pumpkins so today I need to go and collect everything we need to go to Waitrose we need to go to the butchers we need to go to the candlestick makers <laughs> literally everything in between also need to pop to the farm shop so I've kind of got like an errands outfit on and I am obsessed this is the brand new jumper and I think it is the first ever jumper they have ever done this is absolutely gorgeous it is from Fairfax and favor in this gorgeous ecru color it's an off-white creamy tone the most beautiful knit few little cable details here a gorgeous sort of scoop almost polar neck but not. It's quite fine, yet it's not see-through, yet I think it is going to keep me warm today, considering it is really rather chilly. The temperature has most certainly plummeted, and this jumper actually comes, I think, in navy and also in camel, but I loved this. I thought it was perfect for spring, summer, as well as autumn and winter. You could also, like, tuck it in, and then these are a pair of old. Actually, very sadly, the brand has gone bust. However, I do have some fantastic alternatives in that description box down below. They are a pair of like off-white, again, cream faux leather leggings from Uterique. Any of my Spanish, European subscribers will know. It was like the bomb. And then, mm, a gorgeous pair of Regina Fairfax and Favor. These are in the dark olive, almost moss color. And then I have got the piece de la resistance to sort of pop over my shoulders if I get too cold. Excuse all the boxes. <laughs> Those are the luxury by Leonora Hampers arriving. We've got a very exhausted sausage from his walk this morning and my Fairfax and Favor delicious green suede trench it's beautiful so i'm going to pop that over my shoulders and then with my little songmont bag that is the outfit of the day so i'm dressed i'm ready to go we need to forage and hunt <laughs> down lots of pumpkins i'm also praying i can find some white pumpkins i just feel like they're a little bit more aesthetic so the trench is on pour yourselves a glass of champagne or brew yourselves a cup of tea because this vlog is going to be utterly glorious i'm talking hosting entertaining tablescaping floral arranging and just spending the evening with the most inspirational entrepreneurial kind epic women. It's going to be utterly glorious. So let's do this.
in the car and raring to go. So as I said, we have got quite a few different stops to do. I think I might actually do the farm shops first, just because I don't want them to close by the time I get to Waitrose and also do the butchers. And mm, it's also on my way into Henley. There are so many different farm shops around us. I'm so lucky in that sense, but I think I'm gonna head Henley Way instead of Marlow Way. So fingers crossed. There is a wonderful farm shop called the Bosley Patch. So enjoy what is going to be the most, thank you so much, sir, the most beautiful drive across the Hambledon Valley. little uh, farm shop that we have which is called the Bosley Patch and look they are absolutely perfection so little organic squash and pumpkins and they're three pounds each I mean this is just how trustworthy it is here there's no one here I'm um, tending it they've just got a card machine over here they've got eggs they've got jam donuts oh it has been years since i've had a jam donut fresh stoner sourdough look at this beautiful bread here is that incredible and it's four pounds beautiful fresh tomatoes organic cauliflower some stunning florals apples <gasps> local strawberries laces and you know what's really wonderful is they actually have a collection of all of the other farm shops produce in here as well they're so supportive gorgeous local strawberries a little bit of kefir and look at all of these gorgeous and glorious vegetables this is just amazing <gasps> look at those flapjacks mm, scrumptious oh look at this is absolutely amazing fresh eggs well i am going to be picking some of these pumpkins up it's absolutely perfect i've just spotted the lemon drizzle cake the apple cake and look at these carrot cakes this is just incredible this is my little bosley patch haul i've got a beautiful fresh sourdough i went with nine of these gorgeous beautiful white pumpkins or squash not quite sure whether it's a gourd um however i shall be googling two enormous lemons and then i've just sort of tapped in the amount myself sort of added to adding it all up and there's my little receipt i felt like getting a pen and saying thank you this is just incredible. What a gorgeous start to our shopping trip. Well, after a very exciting 
trip to the Balsley Patch. We are back in the car. I'm telling you, I don't even need my trench coat today. Look at that sunshine. It is absolutely glorious. So trip number one tick, super successful. And now actually going to head to Waitrose, get all of the other bits and pieces. And then we're gonna be heading to the butchers. And then, depending upon what time it is, I might go and have a little rommage in one of our other farm shops. We could even stop into Hamilton stores on the way home too, because they've got some really delicious dips. So kind of tomorrow is, it's just such a lovely thing that we have. We set up a group chat of kind of like all of the girlies that live in and around Henley. Kind of the boys have such a wonderful group. It's kind of all the girls girlfriends and wives and they go out probably like two times a week which is just ludicrous and most of the girls are all very very career driven and we don't actually get to meet up that much however tomorrow night is the night and what we tend to do is there's always like an activity or we always have to bring something and so the theme is pumpkins and I believe the girls are going to be doing baked goods so I know there's gonna be some gluten-free and dairy-free brownies there's going to be some pumpkin sweet treats so I kind of feel like I don't particularly need to be doing too many canapes because there's gonna be quite a lot of food. I'm also going to be making a delicious chicken dish. It's my chicken Marbella recipe. Um, it's out of a cookbook that is just so old. I can't even remember. I will show it to you when we get home. And I think I'm gonna prep that this evening so that it's just ready to pop into the Arga tomorrow because tomorrow I'm gonna be doing the florals and laying the table. I'm gonna do a few canapes, maybe my famous guac, and yeah, it's just gonna be gorgeous. I might, I don't know whether to do a pudding, because I don't know exactly what the girls are bringing. And also there are a few girls that aren't like super into cooking, and they're a little bit nervous about whether their food is in fact edible. Um, <laughs> So I might do a pudding just in cases. Anyway, I'm not quite sure yet. Literally as easy as that, I'm heading into Waitrose car park. He's a very dashing gentleman, heading into Waitrose in a tweed jacket and tie. Anyway, oh, what a glorious Friday afternoon we're having.
to Waitrose, so successful in Waitrose, and now actually walking into the market square here in Henley to head to the one and only Machin's to grab the chicken thighs. Here we go. Ooh, the best of the best. Yum de la scrum. So I'm gonna go 14 chicken thighs for my chicken recipe. This is just incredible. If ever you come to Henley, you've got to pop in to Gabriel Machen's. They are absolutely incredible. And send them my love if you do come in. Okay, so waitrose and farm shop, all of the food and a few drinky poos, tick, done. That is like the majority of what I need to get has been purchased which is fantastic and then this evening what i'm going to do i think is actually prepare the main chicken um marbella dish so it's sort of like dates capers chicken olives and the longer it has to marinate obviously the more scrumptious it is going to taste. I'm also gonna get a good sort of idea as to how the table is going to look. I don't know whether to cover the whole table again with my favorite Rebecca Udall tablecloth and then kind of pop the pumpkins down. I have also got lots of pumpkin decorations from my days in the States. So I could pop those down. I think I might also bake a cake. And there was me telling you guys that I wasn't going to bake anything. Thing, but I think it is really lovely to walk in and smell something that is freshly baked. So I might do some muffins or potentially some cookies. Mm, pending. So we're going to do that together. We are also going to be making my famous, and I literally will go as far as to say my famous, dark chocolate pear and banana crumble. Now this time I am going to be making it gluten free and dairy free because I have got quite a lot of dietary requirements tomorrow evening which is something that I definitely can adhere to so it's going to be kind of like a new concept. I don't usually make my dark chocolate pear and banana crumble uh, gluten free or dairy free so I've bought some free from um, gluten-free plain flour which I'm really intrigued to see because actually if it tastes the same if not better then this is going to be the way that I'm going to make it from now on and then in terms of the actual crumble consistency I've got both um, plant-based butter or coconut oil which I think could work amazingly so that is my plan with that I'm gonna do some Mediterranean Moroccan style sort of slightly sweet because I think I'm going to pop a tiny bit of treacle in it, uh, sort of slow cooked vegetables in the aga, and it's going to be scarum didiosha. So I'm going to head home and I think I'm going to pour myself a large vodka and tonic. A couple of things have happened this week that are some big things. Um, they're like almost over the line. Um, and as soon as they are over the line, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty much done um, because they're kind of waiting from my side. But anyway, when we get home, we are going to be pouring ourselves a stiff vodka and tonic. We're going to be shaking our tits because it's Friday and we are going to be toasting a very exciting week. And I always say, guys, it's down to you. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to be doing what I think is like my dream job. I always say I'm so beyond lucky. My horses, my everything. And I used to wake up every single day pinching myself being like, how is this? This is literally my dream life. And when I had my accident, I, I you know, my world 
came tumbling down. I literally felt like it had been shattered. And to have found another job that I am so passionate about and that I absolutely love and that I have thousands of besties in you guys, pinch me. Well, actually don't, no one wake me up because this is literally incredible and I love you guys so much. Anyway, I'm gonna stop wobbling on and I'm going to head home. So I'll see you when we get back. sweet home and now time to pop all of the groceries away i've also got some longing looking sausage dogs over the chicken you're gonna have to keep dreaming boys because that is not for you no you've already had bones this week You've already had bones, they're not for you. So everything needs to be popped away. I'm actually gonna keep the florals in here for the night just to keep them cool and to get them used to the temperature here in the house. Also need to have a little think and a plan as to what I'm going to do with these absolute beauties. And we're gonna carve the pumpkin tomorrow. Gosh, we are going to have so much fun tomorrow. So I'm gonna pop all of this away. I'm then going to pour myself a very large vodka and tonic and then I'm just going to finish off kind of like cross the t's and dot the i's on a few things uh, work-wise to finish off my work week and yeah so I will see you guys tomorrow for a very busy but very exciting day we're going to be hosting cooking baking fashion pumpkin petals partying it's going to be great Hello my angels, good, well I should say good afternoon, it has gone just one o'clock and I've been a bit of a busy bee this morning. I picked up a couple more sort of bouquets of flowers just from the supermarket. These are simple roses that were £3.50 and I am now full on prepping mode. Obviously the hair has been washed and blow dried and is in rollers. Please excuse the like very chilled attire. This is like my busy body outfit <laughs> and I can tell you there is a heap to do today. So first and foremost I'm just going to get the flowers done. As you saw a little bit earlier I have prepared our little pumpkins already. So what I've done is I've actually given them a good clean and then with my knife hopefully I didn't scare too many of you and actually slightly worried because when you kind of go through when publishing a YouTube video you have to sort of take all of these boxes to say that there are certain things in the vlog that you you don't share so for example knives or anything and then it suddenly occurred to me I'm sort of like stabbing a knife into this pumpkin anyway um hopefully I didn't scare too many of you doing that and I can say that my hands are safe so then I scooped out all of the seeds onto a tray and kind of like arming and ahhing as to what to do with the pumpkin seeds I might just wash all of the sort of slime off whack some cumin and some paprika in and pop it in the argot 
like to have like a nice little nibbly bit. So we're going to do florals, we're going to do tablescape, and then I've got to prep dinner. I actually did the chicken yesterday, so it has me marinating in the fridge overnight. Got to prep the Moroccan vegetables or like Mediterranean grilled vegetables that's going to go with our chicken dish. I've been giggling to myself all day. I called it a chicken Marbella. It's not, it's a chicken Marbella. I have no idea why. And actually my book is over here and you'll be able to see quite how loved this recipe is. It's from the Ottolenghi Simple Cookbook. And something I will say is I adore Ottolenghi, but I just find quite a lot of the recipes, there's a lot of steps, a lot of different ingredients, and I haven't got that much time. But with the simple book, um, it's really, really handy. And as you can see, like, this has been absolutely battered. So it is the chicken Marbella, not Marbella. Um, Anywho, it's just such a crowd pleaser and absolutely delicious and something that you can prepare the day before and it's going to actually taste better. So that is what we're going to be cooking. We're also going to be making my dark chocolate banana and pear crumble. We're going to make it dairy free and gluten free. Um, however, not sugar free because it's got to taste good somehow. What else are we going to do? We're going to do all of the canapes, we're going to get ready together, and we're going to be spending the evening together. Now, the kind of dinner party came around, I think I told you guys yesterday, we have this Henley Wholesome Women group. All of the boys tend to go to the pub and watch rugby. And kind of then all of the girls, well, most of us are normally working, but I popped this date in the diary, gosh, I'd say like, I go through, I'd say now months ago, and we always try to have quite a wholesome activity. So today is my pumpkin and pezzles party. And then I kind of thought, well, you know, normally I go OTT with the tablescapes. And then I thought, well, I can't not make an effort. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna take three pound 50 supermarket flowers and turn them into something that is literally going to take your breath away. It's going to be light, it's gonna be bright, it's gonna be beautiful, but also equally seasonal. And then the activity part is I'm going to do little vases for each of the girls and I'm just going to sort of like I'm not going to design them or sort of pop them in in any shape or form I'm going to going to put maybe like the eucalyptus together a rose different flowers into a posy and it will have like maybe a pretty bow haven't quite worked that out yet on the vase and then what they will be able to do themselves is we're going to fill up their little pumpkin with water and as a little party favor along with the activity they are going to do a little floral arranging in their pumpkins which I I think is going to be so sweet and also not too messy um you know pumpkin carving i absolutely love however can lead to chopping fingers off um or just mess everywhere and two things i do not want to have to deal with so this was kind of like the next bex the next bex the nest no the next best thing also going to be opening some like pink champagne i've got some girlfriends who have got their babies breastfeeding and also pregnant friends um and then i've also got the single ready to mingle and have champagne <laughs> don't know what that was friends so i can't wait and i will try and share as much as i possibly can with you guys but unless i get started i'm not actually going to finish in time for them arriving i have four hours to do all of that and look presentable i'm also looking really really tired today um I don't know, you know when you're like, your brain is going a million miles an hour and the snoring walrus next to me was, I, I t <laughs> just not the one. I don't know whether, like, I <laughs> sometimes in the morning, like, God knows what time in the morning I do look at him and think, do you think they would know I actually suffocated? <laughs> I should not admit to that, and no, I would never. But when you've sort of been lying there for hours, hours on end with snoring if any of you have any snoring hacks that will get them to stop snoring i mean it's so bad it literally rattles the bed and if the noise doesn't wake me up because i have like double wax earplugs in um the vibrations on the bed will wake me up that is how bad it is so hence the no sleep any 
anywho, if I warble on, I'm not going to get this finished. So I'm actually probably going to pop you on a time lapse whilst I do the florals. And then we will go and create something actually really different, but so girly and so gorgeous on the table together. I can't wait for this vlog, guys. So please join me. It's time. Pour yourselves a glass of champagne and join me. done always take me longer than what I expect but anyway they're looking beautiful and they're very seasonal but they're not like dark and gloomy the tablescape that I created last week was so beautiful and lovely however I did feel that after sort of two or three days it was quite dark and I always like things to be light and bright but seasonal and classy is always a must now because I want to create something really different and do you know what I would say that that is quite a hard thing when your surroundings stay the same. It's the same table, in the same kitchen, with the same colours. It's just how you do things just slightly differently. Oh, two magpies. Hello, Miss Webster. Hello, Miss Webster for family. Don't know about anybody else at the superstitions. And I can say it so quickly now that you're probably like, what is she saying? Magpies are the black and white birds that people like me who are very superstitious have to salute them. And there is a little saying, hello, Mr. Magpie, how's your wife and family? And you have to say it for each individual one. And one means something something, two means something, oh my goodness, it's a whole palaver. And yes, I am one of those people that have to pull over the car if I see one, because it's unlucky. You've got to see two or more. If you see seven, go and buy a lottery ticket. Anyway, <laughs> gone off on a complete tangent. So I'm going to be using my Rebecca Udall tablecloth. It is green and gorgeous. So I kind of think this as the base will sort of create a really light and a bright sort of colour scheme as such and I don't know whether I will actually pop a runner on the top of it. I'm loving that rustic runner at the moment and I think as I said it's natural and it also creates a natural um, you know runner. You can create a runner if you are just using a tablecloth and you want to create a runner with all of your accessories and florals then you can do that as well. Um, however, oh, I pulled that slightly too far. There we go, make sure that it is perfect. I've done like a zillion steps today and also I'm conscious that <laughs> I'm not quite sure what this outfit is. I've also got like a sports bra underneath this and my trousers rolled over because they are slightly too big for me. But you guys probably see me looking glitz and glam 
99% of the time, but it's also important for you to know that I do also look like this sometimes. So, I kind of need your help. Are we going to go with the runner as well as, I don't know, because there's going to be quite a lot going on with the pumpkins. And where on earth do I put that runner? Hmm. I'm on the hunt for the runner. I think I might be going crazy. I definitely popped the runner here. You know what I'm like, I get myself all organised. <laughs> Where on earth is that gone? Okay, pending. Bear with. A memento. Need to find the runner. Runner has been found. So this is the Hessian runner. And I think what I'm going to do, I don't know. I quite like the fact that it ties in the, I might just do one. One of the sort of slides then. Oh, I don't know, I think one looks too skinny on this table then. Mm. I'd like to keep it. No, actually, I've changed my mind. Changed my mind. I'm going to keep it clean and fresh with the tablecloth. Then, as always, we need to start placing our florals. And these were the beautiful florals that we had for our dinner party last week. And they're looking so cute. They've actually fully dried. Um, but with hydrangeas and eucalyptus, they look fabulous. So I'm going to evenly pop those two down the table. And then I've done three of these. And I think that's going to be our central one. We may need to just bring these in slightly to make sure it's definitely in the middle of the table and then we pop the other two each side there we go and i'm just obsessed with these i don't know what they're called and on the packet from the supermarket they called them the autumn garden arrangement they look like cabbages I am obsessed. I'm desperate to grow these next year. So I'm gonna give you a closer look. This one here. Guys, I need your help. What is the name of this beauty? So that is gonna go there. Gorgeous. And then this one is gonna go this side. Lovely, jubbly. And then all of the little posies can dot around. Now, I've created the tiny, tiny little milk jugs for the pumpkins so that my girlfriends can actually do their own floral arranging in their pumpkin. Um, so I will show those to you in just a moment. How am I going to do this? I think I need one that's slightly... Oh, excuse me! Oh, I've got the much schnitzels. Oh, okay. Right. I wasn't going to go OTT. <laughs> I think OTT is my middle name at this point. I mean, look at the state of me. Oh my goodness gracious me. Okay, they look cute. Cute as a boot. So that looks really sweet like that. And I think there needs to be another one there. And, well, I think I might actually need just one more for that side. Well, to be honest with you, by the time we start putting all of those little posies, they'll look great. Right, next thing is, I mean, this is what I mean by investing in things that are super seasonal placemats that can go literally every single season with every single tablescape. So I'm going to pop those down. And we are nine people this evening, which is going to be heavenly. So I'm going to do four down each side and a head. Um, and then keep that, I don't know whether to slay for 10, maybe I'll pop a, a placemat down, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Now the little green artichokes, because our table is green, these are the little tea light holders, always important to have light on the table, and then we're going pumpkin crazy. There we go. That's gorgeous. Pop that one there. Lovely and chubbly. Now we've got some pumpkins. 
Now these are from last year's Mrs. Alice. Um, there are also lots of other alternatives, so I will link them down below. I think that dark green, fresh whites with those roses looks so gorgeous. A little bit of green there. Make sure to keep going around your table. It will ensure you get your steps in and also be able to see what your tablescape looks like from every angle. And then I've got these gorgeous little pumpkins. I've had these for absolute donkey's years. I can't quite remember where they came from, but they are these little white pumpkins. They look so similar to the real ones that we have. So I'm gonna pop a few of those down. That did not go according to plan, did it? You naughty pumpkins. Okay. Did you see what I mean about it being so light and bright? I love it. Okay, I've got a few of those. This side, a few down here. Maybe one there, and then one sort of there. So everywhere they're kind of looking around the table, there's going to be something gorgeous. I then need to get myself some new candles, because I think these can see better days. I'm going to go four candles. Four candles? I have no idea where that came from, but my mother always goes, four candles! Don't know, I think it was a film. I don't know. I will, I'll try and find out what that was from, but it always does make me giggle. So I'm going to put the candle holders down there. This pumpkin's going to have to move. And then that will be perfect. Scooch that one slightly that way, just because that candle needs a little bit of clearance. And that's perfect. Gorgeous. Pop those pumpkins back. There we go. One there. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. Pumpkins had a bit too much pumpkin puree. So now the pumpkin's down this side. Is there a gap with a pumpkin missing? Maybe there. Love. Oh gosh, this looks so beautiful. I love it. Then I've got my gorgeous. French linen napkins. I don't think I'm going to use my Mackenzie Child's napkin ring holders. They don't go with the vibe. And from my little shopping spree on Amazon last week, I've got lots of coloured, beautiful ribbon. So I'm going to use those. And we're going to be doing gorgeous bows around. But before we do that, I think I need to work out where I would like to pop my pumpkins. <laughs> so napkins going down, again fresh white just keeps it really really clean and gorgeous. Pop that down there and then those are all ready for the ribbons to go on. Just need two more. One, two. I'm going to do the head I think at the other end because this is such a sort of we all hover because normally I set up the canopies here. The kitchen is not going to look like a bomb site, I promise. So what I might do is actually take this chair away and then everybody can stand around this side. So I'm going to pop this one here and we'll do this head, which will look really gorgeous. Also, I can kind of fudge everybody down slightly to give people more room. One more place, Matt. And Bob is your uncle. And now, what we are going to do with our pumpkins. I think it could be maybe like directly in front of and they've got their pumpkin and their florals on their play setting. I mean if I was getting really creative, I don't know, it depends upon, oh my goodness, it is <laughs> 10 to 3. Depends on how much time we have, but maybe I might write in gold the names of the girls so it will also act as their place settings so they know where they're sitting. To be honest with you, tonight it's casual. It's not going to be one of those evenings where people, we're not going to have a table plan. All the gals, all such good friends. 
everybody, <laughs> you know, we're all besties, everybody knows everybody. Whereas sometimes when you have a dinner party where people haven't really met before, I definitely think a table plan is so important because I believe that, you know, a dinner party for a guest can be made by the person that you're sitting next to. So if you are hosting, please, please give it great thought as to who you think that person will really enjoy speaking to and sitting with. So these, these are my little pumpkins, by the way. And I'm going to fill them with water a little bit later because I don't want them to smell, but they smell so delicious. You know that? Mm, mm, delicious. I'm going to put some water in there and then the little vases are going to be next to them and then they can kind of like floral arrange, I think, um, along with just having a nice time. And yeah, I mean, I could put the pumpkin like here and the florals. I could even put the florals in the pumpkin already, but there's meant to be an activity. So, you know, I'm trying my best. So these are the little arrangements. I've not arranged them. I've literally just simply plopped them in, but they look so pretty anyway. So those are going to go next door to the pumpkins and they can literally floral arrange them themselves. And oh, a few more little flowers on the table. Never went to miss. They look gorgeous. So <laughs> you guys made me giggle. I'm so happy that you are loving the sort of real homey hosting vlogs. Um, it literally makes my day because I love this as well. So it's so nice that I get to share it with you guys. I mean, sometimes it does get a little bit overwhelming about the sheer amount of stuff that needs to get done. But I'm so glad that you guys love it as much as I do. Right, I think I need to do a couple more of these posies. Yes, I've not done quite enough so that is for that one i'm just missing myself and to be honest with you i don't really need to i'm actually i don't need to do the floral arranging bit because i will be cooking and baking and everything else now the question is to add conkers or not so I still have my conkers from last week and there were so many questions on my last vlog about what a conker is. So conkers come from trees and they come in these like little, I think Americans, I think you call them acorns, but they're not the same as acorns because we do also have acorns here in the UK. They come off of a Oh gosh, I really need to Google this. I don't know what the tree is. However, I will leave the tree name here. And they have a spiky casing. And then it sort of like breaks open and this shiny conker is on the inside. And they're just gorgeous. When I was a little girl, I used to go conker picking and conker collecting. But however, the little spiky cases are um, actually beautiful themselves, but a real rather hazard, might I add. So I'm thinking, I actually really like the conkers. I think the conkers add a little bit of some richness to the table. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I actually personally think I like this table better than last weekend. I loved last weekend's, I actually thought last weekend's table was my favorite when I did it, but the way that it dried, it looked a little bit gloomy. I don't know, you know what I'm like. I like things to be light and bright. And I definitely think this is light and bright. Now we're gonna have to think, what am I gonna wear? Um, well, I feel like that's a, a later problem. We've still got a huge amount to do before that. Also need to clean the kitchen, run the hoover around and just do an enormous tidy. Cause this is looking like a bomb site. Um, okay, we need candles. Candles? Four candles? Um, <laughs> don't know why, don't know why. Okay, big vase is going back down to the floral room. Those posies are gonna go, that's gotta go. And this is almost ready. We're gonna do the gorgeous little Rebecca Udall. I call them my Princess Diana glasses because they're just so beautiful. We are. Fantastic. That's great. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's almost like 
the, you're drinking out of the bowls. Eight, nine. If anybody cancels, I tell you, I'm going to be morally messed up. I feel like the girls know by now, it's like, if you cancel, you've got to cancel a few days before because the amount of effort I go to, I'm just not one of those that takes cancelling very well, unless it's like life or death or children or your family or your health. Anything but like, oh, I don't know, I don't feel like it. I feel like my generation is so bad for the like flake culture. It drives me insane. If you are my age and you are a flake, just try and work on it. It's got to be a new year's resolution. Unbelievable. I just, I just can't do it. If I am like on, I will, I will, I have to be in hospital for me to pull out of something or something has to have gone so terribly wrong. I cannot, I will literally be so unwell and go somewhere, which actually is probably not a good thing anyway. But anyway, I'm wobbling on again and I've got far too much to do. Right, question is, do we put champagne glasses down on the table? Or are people, I feel like the girls are already gonna have a drink by the time that they sit down. I feel like I'm gonna do like a drink set up up here. Okay, we need ribbons and we need knives and forks. Let's do this. because I think the table is enough. Okay, well, I love it. It's not quite ready because the bows, I feel like are going to make it. So I'm gonna go and get the bows and then we're going to finish her together. So the table is done for our pumpkin and petals party. And I'm so happy. I actually think, I feel like I say this every time, but I actually think that this is better than last weekend. It's just lighter and brighter, yet still so seasonal and it's fresh and just utterly glorious and you can't not smile when looking at it. So we've got this delicious Rebecca Udall um, tablecloth. And again, it's fantastic. Spring, summer, autumn and winter. Beautiful, dark green pumpkins. The beautiful florals. I'm just obsessed with this. This is absolutely glorious. Some conkers dotted around. Oh, I've missed a bow. Hang on a moment. There we go. <laughs> 
sorry about that. So the napkins then have the gorgeous green ribbons on them. We've got knives and forks. Got these beautiful white pumpkins that I have removed all of the pips. And then I will also fill them with water just a little bit later. I also need to top up the tea lights to have fresh ones. Got a little bit of family silver on there. And I just think these Grand Prix roses, the beautiful lilies, the eucalyptus, the hydrangeas, all of these beautiful little dried bits and pieces that look just so gorgeous. And then the conkers scattered around. I think it looks beautiful. I've got some very snoozy sausages as well. And then up here, I've had a good clean and a tidy. And I think that is just gorgeous. It's simple and it's fresh. And then down here, I don't think I'll keep all of these because I think it looks just actually a little bit too cluttered. So I think I'm going to take away those, just keep those, light the candles, and then have all of our dips and crisps and crudité and canapes here. Oh, right. We need to go to the other side of the kitchen. I have actually just very quickly carved the pumpkin. So I've carved a very funny face and this is actually going to be the presentation for our guacamole, my famous guacamole recipe. So I will share that with you guys. So I'm gonna pop the guacamole in the top bit, if I can actually get it out with one hand. No, no, I can't. I'll have to do that a bit later. Put the guacamole in and it will all sort of like coming out of its mouth, um, which will look fabulous so that people can dip into it. <sighs> we've got to prep dinner. We've got to prep the vegetables. We've got to do the crumble. We've got to do the canapes, the crudités. <gasps> we've got so much to do and we have an hour and 20 minutes to get it done. dog walking sunglasses, onions, Ugh. any tips or tricks, I've tried them all, oh my gosh, the onions, don't cry Leonora, you do not have time to redo your makeup. I've just finally stopped crying and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. So you've watched me go around Waitrose and watch me pick up a load of this, which is an incredible brand called Belooza. And literally it is my secret weapon. I'm quite sure what's going on with the focus there. And basically they do lots of different pastes, pestos and their tagine paste. I've also been using their Rose Harissa for years and it's my absolute go-to. Sorry, I'm not snotty, I'm just crying from the red onions. Um, so I'm going to use one of the tagine pastes to go in with the delicious roasted vegetables. I'm going to do a bed of couscous as well and then those delicious chicken thighs are going to sit on the top and it's going to be scrum didiocious. What I would normally suggest you do is to have some disposable gloves. However, I don't have one and I'm a solutions kind of gal. So get yourselves a, a sandwich bag if you don't have any disposable gloves and you are going to want to get all close and personal to your veggies and you want to give it a really good rub. I should have got actually a bigger bag than this and that tagine paste can just be rubbed around all of those delicious veggies. And I'd pop this in at around about, I'd say like 150, you can do it really slowly, but for an hour. And actually this is something that you can do and just keep in the warming oven. Now for those of you who might not have a warming oven, you can just actually turn your oven to the lowest temperature that it possibly will do. And even keep the door of your oven open, not for long that is, and I know it's expensive to do that, but um, your veggies will be done and you can kind of keep them warm as such. Now these veggies won't be served piping hot, sort of lukewarm. Um, 
they'll be delicious. So I'm actually gonna slow roast those in the agar in, ooh, the baking, oh, I've gotta go in the bin. And now I need to wash the carpet because the tagine paste, yeah, the tagine paste is gonna mark anything. If you've got nice nails, do not put your hand in here because it will stain your nails. And that is from someone with experience. Okay, that is that, all done. She is ready for the oven. And my hand is nice and clean. So, that is the veggies done. Okay, from savory to sweet, and this is going to be the best crumble you have ever tasted in your entire life. Huge statement, huge, but factual. So, you're gonna need pears, bananas, and dark chocolate. Now this is the first time that I am making this gluten-free and dairy-free, but if it works, then it's going to be epic. So what you're going to need to do is actually peel your pears. And what we can do is actually prep all of this before our guests even arrive. I'm one of those hosts that love to prep everything so that when my guests arrive, I can actually be present and join in and have a lovely time without being so stressed that I've got to be up here cooking and all of that malarkey. So I'm just going to quickly peel these pears. We're gonna chop them up. We're gonna cut up the bananas and then sprinkle in the dark chocolate. The dark chocolate melts. <gasps> it's outstanding. chocolate you're going to need dark chocolate so I would say 70% is perfect however if you do really enjoy dark, dark chocolate then by all means go stronger and you'll get quite a nice bitter taste so you're going to want to crack that up actually make sure you do not put anything if you have dog latinis so I'm going to break it up into sort of like little knobs like that and then tuck it into the crumble That is the base of our crumble done. So as you can see, I've kind of like worked the dark chocolate throughout the pears and the bananas. And so that is really ready to go. I'm gonna pop that to one side and we're now gonna make the crumble part. Okay, in all honesty, we're winging the crumble part of this. So I've got free from, gluten-free plain flour, gluten-free gluten rolled oats. I've got some delicious brown sugar some caster sugar and some ground cinnamon. The only thing I think with the coconut oil is I think it's gonna actually taste too coconutty. So I think I'm gonna use a sunflower oil. There are other like plant-based butter alternatives. I've just never found something that tastes nice and I don't wanna wreck the rest of the crumble. So we're gonna wing it and fingers crossed. So let's actually start this off. We're gonna do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, da, 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 da. okay, some rolled oats in there, this is also where you can get quite experimental and add like dates, add a little bit more flour, okay, I think that will be enough to cover that, so let me add a little bit more of both of those. Perfect. Divine brown sugar. Mm. Delish. And then a little bit of caster sugar. Plenty of pasta sugar. Okay, this is looking great. 
just when I add the oil, I'm not sure what's going to happen. A little bit of cinnamon. Mm. Delicious. A little bit more cinnamon. And then we're going to add the sunflower oil. I'm just having a little look here at a recipe. It says one third of a cup of smooth tasting oil of your choice. One third. Okay, I'm gonna have to get my cups out. Go on, boys. Go on, everybody out. Okay, I have got my cups out and it says a third of this. But then again, we've not actually followed the recipe, read the quantities of the other bits and pieces. So, I'm really hoping this is going to make it into a crumbly consistency as it would with the butter, if you know what I mean. Anyway, we can only but try. Okay. I think we're going to need a little bit more. I'm going to free flow. We're free flowing. <laughs> okay. Yes! This is working! Okay. Fantastic! Okay. That is absolute brilliant news. I think I'm gonna add, I don't know, rose butter, like kind of, I don't know what this is gonna taste like. Tastes sunflowery, whereas butter, like tastes like, Okay, I've also got like oatly oat cream for our dairy free girly and then I've also got double cream for those girls who have no dietary requirements. Okay, right. I think she is absolutely perfect. You know, you can kind of really get some big crumbly bits and pieces and then I'm going to pour a tiny bit more sugar. We need to mask the taste of sunflower oil somehow. Okay. We said it was delicious. Not healthy. <laughs> okay. That is that done. Fantastic. Now I'm going to keep this somewhere cool, whereas everything else I kind of keep next door to the agar, whereas I think the oil might, you know, we don't want anything to happen to the scramble. I'm going to leave that over here. Give my hands a good wash. Hands are washed. We're going to clean everything up and we're going to start with the guacamole. <sighs> okay, for my guacamole, you are going to need avocados, coriander, cherry tomatoes. I sadly don't have any, however, this large tomato is going to have to do. Some red onion, some limes, olive oil, Tabasco, and a touch of Liam Perrins, some fresh chili as well as dry chili, and lots of really, really good flaked salt. So I'm going to whisk through this and I'll show you the final result. And trust me, it's so delicious. I will leave the um, recipe down below, but it's a party pleaser. And people literally beg to have my guacamole. I'm stressing for time. Oh gosh, and also my back is absolutely killing me. Um, anyway, I'd also really like to sit down at some point today. However, I fear that is not gonna happen and I think it's also gonna just be like a topping up the makeup that I kind of put on this morning to make myself look half presentable. Anyway, this bowl is just literally simply to mix it. And I'm going to pop in, I think four avocados. We are, as I said, nine guests this evening and there's lots of canapes. I'm gonna do the crudité next and then just pop it in the fridge so it's ready and I don't have to worry about it so that when the girls come, I can have a glass of champagne with them and not be sort of stressing in the kitchen. But with anything, you know, hosting does take time, I will say that.
doesn't look delicious, however, it is absolutely outstanding, if I'm allowed to say so myself. So I have just popped Mr. Pumpkin on the Mackenzie Child's platter, a little bit of coriander as the garnish, but I'm going to pop the guacamole in the fridge for now as the guests aren't arriving for another 45 minutes. So it is countdown, get everything done, and then finally I'll be able to run upstairs for a five minute turnaround. So I'm pretty much almost finished. The table is looking absolutely glorious. All I need to do is actually just light the candles on the table. However, I think it's just slightly too early for that. Also need to fill the water glasses and also light the candles over there. Up here, we've got the champagne glasses all ready. I've done a few little nibbles just because I don't know what the girls are bringing. We do always tend to take like baked goods or canapes or nibbly bits. I know there's some famous cheese straws coming as well, but I thought I'd do a few bits and pieces for people to pack on. So all of my dips will be going in here. However, they can go out really at the last moment. Got a few little crispies. We've got some crudite for those who don't eat gluten, different varieties of olives, anchovies and artichokes. And then this is where our guac is going. So maybe I'll pop the crisps over that end. So logistically that's easier. We need to light the candles. I need to take a deep breath, pop some makeup on, make myself look a lot more presentable than I currently do. But after the most miserable day I think we've had all year, the sun is coming out. The sun will come out for my pumpkin and petals party. Can't wait. So we're gonna go and look less harem scarum and more glamorous pumpkin host. And I will see you once I'm ready and then we will spring into action. I'm desperate for a glass of champagne. My back is killing me, but I said to myself I'd host this and we're doing it. <laughs> All dressed and ready for my pumpkin and petals party with my best girlfriends. Looking somewhat poodle-ish, but hopefully the hair will drop. Didn't have enough time to redo the makeup, so I slapped a bit more on. Touch of lip gloss, spritz of Cho Loves, and she is ready. I'm wearing this gorgeous off-the-shoulder sweater dress from H&M. It's an absolute number and a bargain. I will leave it in the details down below. Now to really quickly just pop all the dips out, put the guac out, and just do the final bits and pieces, light the final candles, put some music on, and have a good old swig of champagne to get the night started.
while it has been long awaited and it's been a very long but busy day but I can finally say we are ready for our pumpkin and petals party. I've gone rather cash but the nicest thing about this dress is that it looks quite luxe however it is I think it's 28 pounds or 30 pounds which is just absolutely ridiculous from H&M. I think the champagne's worth more than my dress <laughs> but anyway oh my gosh mm. Cheers everybody. I cannot wait to spend the evening with my girlfriends. I will try and share as much as I possibly can with you guys, but also really want to be present with them too. And it's been so lovely sort of creating tonight with you guys. It's always just so special. But anyway, the nibbles are out. The champagne has been on ice. I can tell you what, this tastes. Mm. Oh, cheers everybody. I love you all. The chicken Marbella has been marinating for almost 24 hours and as you can see it's got those delicious green pitted olives, lots of capers, delicious medjool dates and these are the chicken thighs that we got from Machen's yesterday. Some red wine vinegar, salt and pepper but the secret ingredient is actually black treacle so that is all ready and we'll be going into the oven but as you can hear the boys are barking and our first guests are just arriving. This is the best thing I think I've ever Ever seen in my entire life. So the girls, show show me your baking. Okay. We've got Lancelot, Odie, oh, Raffi and Wiggy. It's oh. a little bit bigger. <laughs> Wiggy's the fat one. The girls, this is like absolutely unbelievable. I mean, this is quite something. Well, it's an, a crushed like, Oreo soil. And um, the creativity, my I darling. To create or Sorry. Oh my god, they're amazing. They're I incredible. Look at the eyes. Oh my god, I love I'm this. Sorry, You're so I'm kind. Not, these beautiful it. flowers. Look at these. you've brought <gasps> well, the queen they, of cheese straws yeah no, darling they look mm, unbelievable they what's in those pesto oh and then those are outstanding so but i did try one <laughs> oh i don't care but they look unbelievable my argus slugs who seem to be utterly exhausted from all of their practice <laughs>
Cheers, 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 girly story. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers, knockout. Cheers, pumpkin and petals party. Actually, Amy, you set this whole thing up, my darling. The WIs, exactly. Oh my goodness, these little pumpkin posies. I just can't even cope. <laughs> Jenna, yours looks like a pro. That is beauty. Look at that. Laura, show me your show me your pumpkin. Oh my goodness! Oh my god, this is so cute! You thought yeah, you thought I was crazy when I said a pumpkin and petals party. She's in her pumpkin era. Girls, how are your pumpkins looking? Um, Hang on a minute, look over here. Look at Laura's pumpkin. Laura's pumpkin is looking very dashing. Can you show me your pumpkin? I'm so proud. It looks so pretty. You need to put some water in there so they stay alive. And your posy, you can whack the water from there in there. Oh, it's already in there. Oh, Christ, sorry. It's starving the florals. Oh, they look so cute. The final girls. I feel like I've missed out such a portion of girls night, but it's been so special. We've had far too much bubbly, but the final cheers of tonight, the pumpkin and petals party. Cheers, everybody. Love you all.